this is a 457-yard hole from where we played it. And I probably got about a hundred and like one fifty. Got about a hundred and thirty-five yards left. That's about normal. This is Eddie Payton today. You'll normally find him on the golf course. You see, 13 years ago, Eddie returned to his alma mater, Jackson State University, to become the head golf coach. Don't laugh. Believe it or not, it's a sport he's loved almost as much and almost as long as football. I went to the golf course from age 10 to I graduated out of high school three times a week. I mean, 365 days a year. Unfortunately, I went as a caddy, but I developed a love and an understanding for the game, and it just translated into applying the ability I had into proper fundamentals. And, you know, being a single digit or zero handicapper uh, goes to show that even uh, muscle bound dumb jocks can master a game if they put their mind to it. So, Eddie Payton is now a golf coach, and a good one at that. He led JSU to the NCAA Golf Regionals in 1996. It was the first time a historically black university had advanced that far. And that leads us to a reality in Eddie's life these days. He's an African American in a sport that's long been called a country club white man's game. And just as Tiger Woods is helping break the color barrier in golf, Eddie Payton is too, and in several ways. First of all, Eddie successfully recruits both black and white golfers to predominantly black Jackson State. And secondly, he takes seriously his role of encouraging participation in golf among African American youth. Well, I have to. I mean, I'm at the historically black college that I went to at Jackson State, and uh, I feel that it's my responsibility to put the best minority players that I can get in a position where they can compare and compete against people of other nationalities or other races and prove that not only they're as good but can do better if given a chance. Mm -hmm. If they don't, they can't say they didn't have the opportunity and maybe someone will see where they fell short. Some other minority kids come into our program and not make the same mistakes. So these days, Eddie is a proud family man and a golf coach. But that name, Peyton, for both Eddie and his younger brother Walter, the NFL's all-time leading rusher, the name Peyton will be forever linked to football. Let's rewind to 1980, relive some NFL memories as Eddie prepared for another NFL season in the deadly Mississippi heat. If the heat wave's been getting you down this summer, think about this man, former Jackson State running back, now NFL veteran Eddie Payton, who's been working out here in Jackson the past several months in preparation for his fifth year in pro football. Training is hard anywhere you go, and uh, the harder it is while you're preparing, the easier it'll be when you get to camp. Uh, I'm really happy to see these 100 degree days because it makes me work that much harder. I was a frustrated return man <laughs> trying to prove my worth as a running back. But, you know, being able to return kicks and not make mistakes allowed me uh, to get the opportunity to, to try to prove that I was as good a running back as the other Peyton in the family. And, you know, uh, one motivated the other. And as long as I was doing well at one, I got an opportunity every day in practice to show if needed, I could do the other well. A Sunday game against the uh, San Diego Chargers back in uh, 1979. I had two returns called back, punt returns called back for touchdown and still end up with 179 yards. Kansas City in 79, I finished uh, third in NFL in kickoff returns and third in NFL in punt returns. And uh, I really thought if not for an error by the statistician, I would have led the league in both. So that was a great year. Yeah, Ron Radouch, who played for the Chicago Bears, I, I think he was from maybe Texas or somewhere. He covered kicks. He was 6'5", 275, ran like a deer, and I cut back right where he was and never saw him coming. Uh, the smell of the smelling sauce that I was given repeatedly to revive me left an indelible impression on me and, on, uh, and about his ability. <laughs> Boy, that was the best three summers that we'd ever had. We were able to get some of the finest athletes in the world to come back to Jackson, give us their time, and we didn't charge any admission. And we had between 350 and 450 kids each year, and I can almost assure you that the kids left with a positive attitude about themselves, and they knew a little bit more about the game and how to play it. 
Uh, we still see kids now who were in our camp, who were playing college football, who played professional football. So, man, you remember me? I was in your camp, and I'm going, no, nah, you've grown a little bit. <laughs> but that was, that was, that was worth doing, uh, being able to give back to the community free. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's lost somewhere. Uh, we all role models in what we do. Uh, there's someone always either looking at us or evaluating what we do and what we say. And uh, I take it seriously.